So, yeah, back to you. Drop us the alpha and uh, about the other vaults that you mentioned over there. All right, awesome, Marianne. So, yeah, we always uh, leave the best alpha for the DeFi Dojo. So, yeah, as I was saying, we are going through a migration at the moment. Um, again, we've done this multiple times before. This is our third time. We've migrated over $6 million from the farms in you know about 24 hours. So the majority of everybody already in Spark uh, has gone through this. If you're new to Spark, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, the code un under the hood is all uh, ready to roll now. And the reason that we went through this migration is uh, to, pe to prepare for the auto vault. And what I was saying is, uh, for those of you that, that may be a little more familiar, um, these are a version of the beefy auto compounders. Um, however, they're much more powerful. And uh, this technology is brought to us uh, by Dex Finance. They are another incredible team um, uh, that started right around the time we started on, on uh, with EMP uh, about two years ago. Um, and they are a very powerful development team that we've essentially merged with. And so they're offering uh, all of our development support for Spark um, and now EMP and Fusion uh, as well. And so with that, uh, not only is this an auto compounder, but it also incorporates multiple LP assets. So you too technical here, but um, you can choose multiple LPs to put within the auto compounder. And not only does it auto compound your rewards, but it will also rebalance your LPs uh, in terms of, again, uh, if one of the LP uh, uh, pairs goes down in price, it will take whatever you're paired with and essentially DCA uh, into the lower valued asset. And uh, when that asset goes up in value, it will sell, uh, DCA sell uh, into you know the one that's, that's going up. And so essentially these are a cross between your traditional auto compounder and a balancer pool um, that again, a lot of you might be familiar with. And this is uh, the first of its kind on Pulse. Um, and not only will it benefit and be usable uh, under SparkSwap, but it will also include other DEXs as well. So you could essentially add your Pulse X LP to one of these auto compounders, which again is the, the number one native DEX on Pulse. Um, and that those rewards, again, will be auto compounded um, back into your assets, or you can choose to take profit through an ETF in whatever asset you would like. So there is a ton of bullish uh, updates happening this week, and you guys are one of the first to hear about it. Um, and we'll have a full white paper and tutorials on uh, all of these auto vaults. But uh, the, the long story short is it will essentially double, triple, or even quadruple our daily volume on, on Spark uh, and SparkSwap as a whole. And right now, you know, we're doing anywhere from half a million to a million dollars a day in volume. And with that increase in volume, that is even more platform fees, swap fees, uh, arbitrage fees that will go toward supporting Sparkler and the price of Spark. And again, Sparkler is our revolutionary contract that actually gives utility to the reward token. Um, just like pancake swap uh, and, and the cake token um, and most other uh, you know well-known uh, dexes, there is a reward token, but that reward token is only meant to be sold. Well, with Spark swap, uh, our reward token is Spark. Uh, however, when you stake your Spark in the Sparkler contract, you actually earn part of the real revenue from the dex and the bridge. So if you've ever wanted to own a part of a DEX uh, or bridge and collect those fees, what we call real revenue, um, you just stake Spark in the Sparkler and start earning. So those are some really, again, key uh, elements that make SparkSwap very different. 
bullish 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 great uh great announcement and yeah thank you thank you for making uh defi touch of the first place uh you know for it to be announced i really appreciate that um few questions now in order for someone uh to make like you know his own let's say um pool with different uh with with different lps that does that mean that all the LP, uh, all, all these pools have to be within the Spark Swap or they can kind of like, you know, get it from elsewhere as well and uh, combine it? Let's say one pool from Spark Swap and another one from X, uh, XYZ uh, pool. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that is the other thing that's super unique uh, and, in my opinion, super bullish. And the answer is uh, multiple platforms. So you can take your LP, uh, again, just as a hard example, say Spark PLS, uh, that is our main LP on SparkSwap. You can uh, create that LP, then you can go over to PulseX, you can create the, uh, again, say, you know, USDT uh, PLS um, LP on, on PulseX, and then combine both of those LPs into one vault and essentially earn both uh, ink rewards and spark rewards uh, at the same time, auto compounding multiple times a day. Uh, and again, those rewards are converted to pulse. So that's more buying pressure uh, on pulse. And then you can choose to take profit in say spark. So then that pulse is actually buying spark uh, every day. And not only does this again, as you can see, create a ton of volume um but it actually even though technically you know you're selling some spark uh as rewards um because you're able to take profit in spark if you choose um it actually buys it back uh as well and on top of that with the harvest fees um there is also you know a, a revenue from those fees that go to help mitigate any sell pressure. So we think that we have a true win-win uh, scenario where not only are we literally, like I said earlier, uh, uh, tripling our volume, which again triples the amount of fees we're able to collect, but it also works out to be profitable for um, all of the vault users as well. Again, we've done some numbers just based on uh, the data that we have over the last two years on other LPs and uh, the Dex Finance Vaults, that technology, because of the, the balancer style, uh, uh, you know, basically, like I said, DCAing the bottom and selling the top um, within those assets, it's able to outperform um, just a simple basic auto compounder by up to 10% a year. So uh, the numbers don't lie. And it's very powerful, both from a, a protocol standpoint and an investor standpoint. And, you know, like I said, too, there's nothing like this on Pulse at the moment. So we feel like we're going to capture a ton of market share, you know, whether it's part of Spark uh, and, and SparkSwap or, or not. You know, we win either way uh, because of all that volume. Wow. Wow, and yeah, really great to uh, see you guys working. I mean, they they, they were part of uh, let's say the Spark up uh, e ecosystem over there because we had Dex Finance uh, back in I think it was October or November when we had the the mega space uh, with you guys. Uh, but yeah, they had a re uh, really uh, great product over there. So yeah, it's it's really nice to see you uh, guys working together in first place, and then uh, for SparkSwap uh, utilizing uh, their tools over there. Um, now, in terms of um, l l let's say again, it depends on the how how the what pool everyone will create in terms of returns. But uh, do do we have any? let's say number so let, let me put that way so it's it's kind of like clear for everyone if we mix a pool if we if, if, if we combine two pools right how is the um 
outcome, the, the reward kind of like part will work. Uh, let's say one pool gives 10%, the other one 20%. Does that mean that it will, the uh, outcome will be 15% or it's kind of like weight and uh, based on certain criteria? Yeah, this is a great question. So again, uh, it's a little hard to do the math. Uh, again, there's a lot of extenuating circumstances uh, and variables, but the short answer is um, the APY can be, again, not only uh, the volume double or tripling, but the APY could also double or triple. So on a standard farm, again, uh, let's just take Spark PLS, for example, um, that farm APR is calculated without compounding, um, and that's sitting at about 150% uh, yearly. Well, because of the auto compounder, and again, this is just one LP, it, you know, the number could be even higher if you have multiple LPs. Um, it's not a complete one-to-one uh, -one ratio. Uh, again, uh, Aaron, in your example, you know, if, if another LP pool was yielding, you know, 50% APR and Spark PLS APR is 150, it's not necessarily 200. It's a little bit less. Um, so the math is not one-to-one. -one. However, because it's actual APY, which again includes this auto compounding of, you know, in some cases it can be hourly if there's enough volume, uh, but at the bare minimum, it's multiple times a day, you know, two, three, four times a day uh, uh, in the vaults. That auto compounding is massive because again, 24 seven, you're compounding rewards and the APR again, just in a single asset, uh, uh, pool or uh, farm rather uh, to keep the math easy. If you get a hundred fifty percent APR, you can get up to six hundred percent APY uh, in those auto volts. So again, a two to three x on the yield um, because of again that constant compounding uh, of the assets. So yeah, again, really bullish for the investor and a great way to you know encourage more users and more volume uh on in those vaults for sure yeah even even the projects like you know if you have a if you're a project and owner i don't see why not uh wanting to be uh you know to to utilize uh the spark swap right because you will get the exposure over there uh, if, if if people if investors can make like a uh, good combos and have uh, can have a good yield uh, out of these pools uh yeah then the projects as well will want to be there in order to get uh, that exposure more eyes on their project and see um you know utilizing those pools uh and w when is it, what's the eta for uh for it to go live roughly yeah. Do you so yeah this is also some great news uh, we had a developer meeting today, and uh, everything is working already uh, on the test environment. Um, we're standing everything up to go live, and hopefully all of this will be ready uh, within the next few days. So we're hoping by the end of the week at the latest uh, that everything will be ready to roll and people can start depositing. That's pretty fast. And how long have you guys been working uh, on, uh, together on this one with Dex Finance? Yeah. So again, we uh, we absolutely love the Dex Finance team. They've been with us from essentially day one. Spark Up is just over five months old. Uh, we've been able to again accomplish an amazing amount in that short amount of time, and they've been helping with development all along the way. Um, uh, but the actual vaults. You know, again, it's the same sort of tech uh, that they've implemented on Arbitrum, BSC, Avalanche, all the major EVM chains. Um, and that tech uh, has been audited multiple times. Uh, it's pretty much bulletproof. And Dex Finance has been building the vault technology, again, for over a year and a half. So uh, even though we're, we're implementing it for Pulse, um, under, again, the SparkSwap umbrella. Um, the code in the tech itself is bulletproof. Uh, it's been audited by Halborn um, and many other uh, legitimate audit uh, agencies. And so, yeah, we're super confident that it's ready. All it is now is plug and play uh, for Pulse uh, and all the Pulse LP and the entire Pulse ecosystem.
And in regards of the face, do the face remain the same uh, or as, as a usual yield farming or do they change now with, uh, with the new updates? Yeah, awesome question. So with the farms, again, uh, we have an in and out fee and the farms, um, you will still have to pay that in and out fee. Uh, again, Spark PLS and Spark uh, STI, those are our native farms, so there are no, are no fees at all. Um, but some of the other LPs, you know, uh, there is an in and out fee. Uh, some only have an a exit fee. So just be aware of that. Um, uh, but the vaults themselves actually don't have an entry and exit fee. They have what we call a harvest fee. So the harvest fee uh, is, is just under 10%. Um, it's about 9.95% uh, on harvesting alone. And I know that might sound high, uh, but beefy is the same. Um, and really, because it only applies to the harvest, um, it really doesn't affect your APR as much as you would think. Um, and you're able to outperform, you know, again, that, that yield as if you would just have it in the farm. And you have to remember that those, uh, those fees, they don't go to, the, you know, our pocket. Uh, they go to feeding the real yield of Sparkler. So, you know, uh, if you're bullish on Sparkler, you like uh, those higher fees uh, to, again, not only support buying pressure uh, on Spark and keep the token price of Spark healthy, but also to reward you even more for being in Sparkler. Um, and so we also will have some boosted uh, vaults in the beginning, um, which will be some extra rewards for a few uh, vaults that are most beneficial to the protocol. And so you will make way more than the harvest fees uh, would be daily for sure. Oh, so most, awesome. yeah. And um, it's kind of like worth mentioning again that uh, what you said about the true yield over there and all the fees that go back to it. Uh, so it can, because uh, this part clear right now, it's giving uh, 76.7 APR, which is really good. Totally rewarded as of now has been um, seven, yeah, 732 thousand uh us dollar yes, with a total liquidity of one million as of now so uh yeah great great numbers great uh insights uh, as of now yeah, everyone sparkler, can check yeah Sp mm -hmm. <laughs> Sp not to cut you off around but yeah man sparkler has been a beast so again even though that 76 percent apr might be less than some of the farms you have to realize that that is real yield from the protocol and very very sustainable and those that that state their spark um early on uh you know at, at the maximum time length of 10 years again i understand 10 years is an eternity uh in crypto but you get the, lo the the larger bonus the longer you stake some of those people have already done a 10x just on the yield alone so it's much more beneficial to uh stake in sparkler rather than selling your spark on the market. Um, again, we're not here to sell shame anybody. We're here to educate you on a, a better way. And yeah, you know, even some people that have, you know, staked within the last week, some of them have already done 10% uh, ROI uh, within, you know, a few weeks. And now they have the next nine years or nine and nine years and uh, 11 months <laughs> to yield on Sparkler. Um, so it's very, very powerful. And like you said, the numbers don't lie. We've given away, uh, what was that number? Almost 700,000 uh, in actual fees uh, so far already. Yeah, yeah, definitely really good numbers. And the 700,000, uh, what kind of like period does it cover? How long has that been for again? Yep, so we, we launched, uh, we, it's about five and a half months. So again, uh, you know, based on that alone, you know, and, and that's with the volume being fairly low, you know, we could be rewarding literally millions of dollars a year in fees uh, back to all the sparkler stakers uh, for sure. 
All right, yeah, definitely. Uh, we will post actually the links once again here. Uh, but yeah, have have a look, everyone. Well, after the AMA, check um, check the platform over there, the SparkSwap dot uh, X Y Z, and uh, yeah, go go through the farms, the pools, the sparkler, and uh, play around. Check the calculators uh, on on the platform. Now, kind of like a really quick. Uh, overview on how can someone use this sparkler like what what do they need to buy in case that they are uh, they are not familiar and yeah how do they utilize it yeah absolutely so we have a really easy to follow guide um again we're a little bit uh cheeky with it we call it the infinite money generator uh again obviously uh that's a bit joking but if you utilize uh the the strategy it really is not far from the truth. Uh, as long as we have volume uh, on SparkSwap, it could be an infinite money loop. Uh, so uh, again, the infinite money generator, the way to do this is we always recommend starting in the farms. So uh, again, not financial advice, but hypothetically speaking, uh, a great strategy would be to first create your Spark PLS uh, LP or Spark or Spark SDI LP, that is the highest paying farm uh, at the moment, the Spark SDI, um, uh, but you just don't get as much price exposure to Pulse uh, on that one. So again, it's a give and take, um, but you could zap right in. So even if you don't know how to create LP, there is a button uh, when you go to deposit in the farms that asks you, uh, it says create LP, um, and you can use Pulse, Hex, uh, Inc., any any of our supported tokens to zap in to LP. So uh, you would just choose however much you want to do. Uh, again, uh, say $1,000, uh, half of that would buy uh, Spark, and half of that would buy uh, SDI or, or PLS, depending on what farm. Um, and then now you're starting to earn uh, daily, and no Spark that you earn can then be staked into Sparkler uh, rather than uh, selling it for rewards. And then you earn Spark PLS LP tokens from Sparkler uh, every day. And then that Spark PLS LP could then be put right back into the farm to start earning more Spark all over again. Uh, or if you want to take profit, maybe you're a little more conservative, um, you can break the Spark PLS LP, you keep the pulse as profit, and then put the Spark back into Sparkler again to repeat that process. And because of this, it gives massive utility and use case uh, to Spark itself. And it's one of the only economic models where you don't have to sell the native asset to actually profit from the protocol. And all of this is very, very healthy. Uh, you know, zero ponzonomics um, and, and much more sustainable for the long term. So uh, that's the great way to get started. Uh, another thing you can do is just buy Spark outright uh, and then put that in the Sparkler. But again, we always suggest that you have at least some in the farms uh, or auto vaults that are coming um, because that will get you more Spark every day uh, to continue to build your position uh, in Sparkler. So yeah, does that help, Aaron? Hopefully, I explained it okay. It does. It does, and uh, no, it's um, the the platform. It's uh, really friendly in terms of uh, at least for me. But uh, again, everyone, after the may feel free uh, go out there and uh, you know check it out if you have questions, if you feel like you're struggling somewhere, etc. Uh, make sure you join their telegram and ask all those questions. I'm pretty sure that, uh, yeah, you, you will get an answer on whatever you uh, you might have, kind of like an issue or uh, a question about. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we, uh, we have an amazing community. All of our mods uh, are very helpful. Uh, sometimes I'm even in there to help uh, directly one-on-one. -on -one. And we, we definitely, you know, uh, uh, education is a really big part of our mantra and uh we are are very uh uh, uh open oh, we have an open door policy on uh, educating the community we have a bunch of great graphics 
uh, as well. I think you posted one in the chat uh, that explains that infinite money generator uh, loop. Uh, and, uh, you know, we also do multiple AMAs of our own uh, twice a week in our own community where we answer literally every question uh, that somebody might have uh, and walk everybody through the process of getting involved. Absolutely, absolutely. And as, as you said, I have a post as well and pinned here within the Nest, the Infinite Money Generator. Uh, it, it kind of like explains how uh, everything that J AJ did cover uh, right now about compounding and uh, taking your profits in PLS though. So you, you will not damage uh, kind of like the charts out there because this is the biggest issue when, uh, when all these... Um, uh, protocols in a way uh, reward their investors. If they reward, uh, they reward into their government's token, what ends up happening is like uh, all, all that chart will kind of like uh, will keep bleeding, uh, especially if the reward uh, the rewards are too high and uh, there is no kind of like sustainable uh, some, something to back it up. Uh, in a way, like uh, here, for example, we have all the fees. It's not like uh, it's a set token of uh, a set allocation of tokens set aside in order to pay these uh, high yields. Uh, and yeah, for everyone to check it out. And um, yeah, great it, and it's, it's, oh, mm -hmm. no, no, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I was gonna cut you off really quick. Uh, so yeah, no, those were amazing points. And again, I mean, as you said, that's the pitfall of many, many other yield farms and taxes, you know, it's either they they have all these emissions that are only meant to be sold, and you see the, the chart go down and to the right uh, uh, forever, or, you know, they promise buybacks, uh, but that really doesn't help or is not enough, uh, because again, the majority of those fees go to the developer's pocket um, instead of the, the users of the platform. So those are some really key uh, differences and again the the proof is in the chart i mean we've been really steady uh going uh you know uh, to the right uh and up a little bit down a little bit but very steady and in this sort of a protocol the idea is that you make your money from the yield not necessarily the token going up in value uh like we see you know uh from typical meme tokens or other uh, NFTs where somebody has to buy the, the asset from you at a higher price uh, to be able to profit. So, uh, and we are, we do have a plan for uh, the emissions. Obviously, you know, you can't just inflate a token forever. Uh, right now, you know, we have a very long runway, uh, but eventually we are going to reduce and even possibly get rid of the emissions altogether where we transition into a full real yield model where all the uh, farm rewards uh, are just a share of the revenue uh, and fees that are generated uh, on each of those individual farms. Very similar to the V3 model uh, of, of you know concentrated uh, liquidity. So yeah, we have a, an amazing roadmap uh, and we understand all the mistakes and you know flaws that all these other protocols have and we build to fix all of that for sure no no uh definitely takes time and you know all, all these ups and downs i think it's uh it's normal it's all right especially when it comes to crypto people will get in and out they they are making x amount of money or whatever their desire and target it they will get out um but you know as we keep saying, uh, as long as the team and the project keeps uh, keeps building and developing and adding value on what they are doing, on what's their tool and uh, the service that they provide, I think the chart-wise and investors will kind of like uh, it, just, you know, flipping over investors. Old investors who might not have the patience, etc., will go out, uh, will kind of like go to another project, etc. New, invest new investors who will see the value, etc., will come in. So... I don't see any issue to that. Uh, again, it, it comes down to the patience of, of each and everyone uh, of this space when they are putting money towards a project. 
but yeah, again, as long as the team is there, uh, the project keeps uh, keeps work. Uh, the project can like uh, keeps adding new tools and utils, and you know you, you have the migration. That means that uh, you guys have put uh, time and effort to think of uh, you know how to make it, how to make the streamline, how to make the your products even better. So yeah, keep that in mind uh, and always uh, always do your own research when it comes to the teams and uh, if those tools, uh, if what they are building uh are going to be adopted uh down the road and it comes down to pull chain as you said and they really want to pick your kind of like let's say we you you've been in the space for uh since 2010 and you kind of like know how to read people let's say or how to read certain suggestions so but not financial advice just your thoughts on how do you see Pulse Chain going on from, from this point? And, you know, we, with everything, with Richard Hart and uh, the lawsuit and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's, so, it, this yeah. is, and why I'm asking, sorry, why, yeah, why yeah. I'm asking, because this is part as well, it has to do with SparkSwap. If Pulse Chain does well, that means that uh, the, the future for SparkSwap will be uh, bright as well. Yeah, no, I could not agree more, brother. And again, I love this question because it's something that a lot of people, especially in the beginning, they were like, what? You're going to build on, on a Pulse? Uh, and so I'm an original hexagon. Uh, I'm an OG, you know, uh, supporter of all Richard Hart ecosystems. Uh, and love them or hate them. I mean, you can't argue with the, uh, the, the success uh, that Richard has had. And, you know, whether it's outrage marketing or uh, just the ability to, to raise funds, uh, the ability to educate, the ability to destroy, you know, uh, uh, these uh, naysayers on his live streams. Uh, he's a very, very interesting character. Um, uh, and, and above all, his ability to, to you know, uh, garner and create a community. And we talk about this a lot. We, you can have the most amazing blockchain on the planet, you know, with all these incredible revolutionary features. But if nobody is using it, it doesn't matter. And so Richard Hart understands that. And uh, admittedly, you know, Pulse is not that uh, revolutionary in terms of tech. Uh, it's a faster, cheaper, you know, uh, more streamlined version of ETH. Uh, but it is just an EVM chain. Um, but there are a lot of diehard users. And as we've seen in the last five months, uh, a lot of builders as well. And those are the two things that make a chain successful. And so we uh, saw that again early on. Uh, you know, love them or hate them. Uh, we are fans of Richard Hart. Um, and we thought, man, if we could build a DEX um, and have at least somewhat of a first mover advantage, we could really capture market share. And again, I mean, within those five months, we've skyrocketed to you know, the number two or number three, uh, depending on the day, uh, decks on all the pulse. Um, so, and we are bullish for the future, you know, especially now that Richard has taken a very hard stance against the SEC. Uh, obviously, that indictment really hurt the, the chain, you know, and we launched right around that time where we were at the bottom uh, of pulse. Um, and obviously, you know, part of that was uh, strategy. Part of that was luck uh, that we did launch at the bottom. And now we've seen, again, 100x, I mean, 100x, I hope 100x. <laughs> uh, we've seen a 100% gain, or 1x, uh, uh, 2x, uh, on Pulse already from the bottom. And now that Richard has said he's going to fight the SEC, I think that's really powerful for crypto as a whole. Um, he's hired some rock star attorneys uh, to do that. And we can see a very similar situation that we saw with Ripple or XRP uh, or Coinbase or any of those, where when they won their case uh, against the SEC, the, the ecosystem absolutely mooned. Um, so, you know, we're excited for that. And I think just based on the economics alone uh, and this next bull cycle, we could easily see a 5 or a 10x uh, on Pulse. And because Spark is so heavily bonded with Pulse itself, uh, that will also, you know, do the numbers uh, for Spark uh, as well. So, yeah, we're super bullish. Yeah, man. Um, 
I, again, it's 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 kind of like uh, <laughs> weird the whole situation with uh, Richard Hart. It's kind of like a situation of uh, either you love him or you hate him uh, as a person and what he does. But uh, I think overall, though the chain itself, uh, it's it's pretty good. It keeps. Uh, I see more and more builders, more and more kind of like volume going towards uh, Paul Chain, and uh, as you said. Uh, the past few uh, few days, few weeks, uh, it has done some uh, good exits from where it was. So definitely, it looks like, and it seems like uh, more money coming, uh, going going towards pull chain. So, yeah, quite an exciting uh, chain. Definitely has its ups and downs, but uh, no, as long as um, you know everything, everything is functioning uh, really good. Uh, like you no, know, without it, etc. I don't see why not the chain kind of like. Uh, succeeding from uh, from where it is right now and of course if the chain succeeds that means that all the projects that are within that uh, chain uh, will have a huge kind of like boost and advantage and uh, yeah for every project especially that is building in bad times imagine what will happen in good times so looking forward man looking forward it's it's kind of like uh again it has been a huge topic uh sometimes Absolutely. in our in our voices and other other kind of like telegrams that have been around um yeah absolutely brother well and again i mean just to end on that i mean i'm a big believer that the numbers don't lie uh again all the on-chain data that's a beautiful part about uh blockchain is that everything is immutable and verifiable and uh, just based on our bridge alone, you know, we've been seeing much more volume coming into Pulse Chain rather than going out of Pulse Chain. And, you know, that data to me shows that people are getting more interested. They are getting more excited. They are getting more bullish on the future of Pulse. And again, uh, you know, if you look at history, you know, the average X's that a, a layer one or layer two chain will do. Uh, is about 42x. So, you know, over the next five, 10 years, you know, we could easily see that, uh, you know, uh, with Pulse. Now, again, I don't know about a 10,000x uh, like Hex did. Um, I think that might be a little bit far fetched. Uh, but, that would you be know, awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I think that, again, you know, those that have the long term mindset uh, are, are the ones that really will win, you know, as long as they're participating in quality projects with, you know, devs that aren't going to rug, um, you know, that's the, the dream uh, is to live off the yield, you know, that, that your investments uh, produce. So for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let, let, let's talk a bit about the bridge now. So quite interesting over there uh you have a seamless bridge between uh bsc and arbitrum as you said and uh, bsc uh towards pull chain right yeah 100 percent. so the bridge has been a major success yeah i uh, i'm happy to go into more detail but just on the surface uh we are one of the only uh uh bridges from bsc to a pulse and as far as i know the only bridge from Arbitrum to Pulse. So uh, all that is super great for, again, product market fit. Uh, and and it's funny because uh, for those that are more familiar with the PLS ecosystem, the only way to get funds in for the longest time was through the native uh, Ethereum bridge, uh, again, Ethereum to PLS. And the problem was is that not only was it expensive because of the gas fees, but sometimes the bridge would take up to, you know, two or three hours uh, to confirm and go through. And uh, recently, Richard Hart uh, announced that the bridge fees uh, are now zero. So the Ethereum to Pulse bridge uh, is 100% free. However, because you still have to pay the Ethereum gas fees, even with our modest 0.5% uh, fee on the bridge, we actually are still cheaper for most transactions uh, under $10,000 uh, because of those gas fees. So it's pretty incredible that we're able to beat uh, the price of a free bridge uh, with our ecosystem. And again, if you if you want to have, uh, if you want to come from ETH, um, you can just move your ETH to Arbitrum and then move ETH uh, again through the bridge uh, on Arbitrum. So 
we still have all the same uh, abilities and you know we are an actual bridge other than you know like a simple swap where you have to send your funds you know to a random wallet address and hope that it appears uh, on the other side uh we have an actual smart contract uh you know that that holds uh the funds as collateral in the bridge and our bridge average runtime uh is about two minutes so uh and even if there is a problem with the transaction or the gas or the nodes uh it will automatically refund your original bridge after one hour if it hasn't uh gone through so again very very uh uh the utility is incredible and once you've used our bridge for one time you it's your the only bridge that you ever want to use uh for pulse for sure how much volume do you have uh do you guys have so far yeah either so, daily or monthly or you know and and any figure that you have in front of you right now absolutely so we're working on the api right now to actually show uh the daily volume of the bridge uh those that are really good at on-chain analysis can probably uh do the math but we're doing you know multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a day uh in in bridge fees or in bridge volume rather um and again for all those fees go right to the platform so again we take a 0.5 percent fee uh which is very uh standard industry uh fee and then rather than going to the devs that goes to sparkler you know and other hard costs uh that we have in the platform so yeah really bullish and another good uh, awesome uh, uh addition to the bridge was not only are you able to bridge uh uh assets over but now you're actually able to swap in the bridge as well so if you're new to pulse and you have no gas uh that is a problem because you can't you don't have pulse uh, to be able to do transactions uh, on pulse chain so now you can actually choose in the bridge to receive pulse uh from any other asset so not only are you able to bridge but you're also able to do a swap within the bridge so you have actual pulse uh to be able to use on pulse chain wow that's amazing that's amazing and um the w where do the fees from the bridge go to yeah so as of right now all of them go to a treasury contract and then that is used to pay uh sparkler rewards so eventually part of those uh fees will also go to support uh emp fusion um but by then we hope the volume is high enough that you know uh it's even more uh fees for sparkler than we're getting now uh even with diverting some of those to fusion so but as of right now sparkler gets all of the uh the bridge fees and the uh the farm fees so sparkler is uh is is the fancy place to <laughs> to be exactly but uh no quite quite impressive again um it, it makes sense like you know uh you guys have uh have done almost uh yeah for, uh, for seven seven hundred uh seven hundred fifty thousand close to seven hundred fifty thousand so far uh in terms of rewarding your community uh over there uh, your holders and everyone who uh is using the sparkler uh which is quite impressive and uh, yep, do you want to add more yeah. chains uh for the bridge yeah so both so just to clarify on what you said that's over a hundred thousand dollars a month uh in in reward so yeah it's super bullish and yeah this this next question uh is is definitely part of the roadmap um, we're also building another protocol uh, called L1 DEX, which is another DEX uh, on the L1X blockchain, where uh, their, their claim to fame, uh, and we're going through a test net right now to prove all of that, uh, is they are interoperable with literally the top 10 other EVM and non-EVM chains. So with this project, we hope to not only integrate Pulse into that, uh, but also spark swap where we'll be able to again not only have the bridge for bsc and arbitrum but the top 10 uh evm chains as well phantom avax solana 
uh, uh, you know, all of them. So, yeah, that's super exciting for the future as well. Perfect. And I have a DM. Wait a second. And what about the LP on all this change? Who, who is adding all the uh, LPs or is the bridge um, a third party bridge? Yeah, so we that's a really cool thing too. Uh, and that's why we built, you know, everybody, some people think, well, why are they building all these, you know, sister projects, uh, dividing their time and attention? Well, that the, uh, the answer is that we're building our own infrastructure where, uh, again, to your point, uh, is that we have the LP. So and not only will there be LP in L1 DAX, but now we're able to utilize the LP in SparkSwap because in order to bridge, you have to have LP on both the source and the destination chain. So we're essentially building uh, our own partner network uh, of protocols that we actually own um, that will be able to, again, provide deep liquidity uh, for all of these bridges. Awesome, 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 good. I think uh, that was covered. If not, please let me know uh, if you have a follow-up question on that one. Yeah, um, one more follow-up in terms of LP2 uh, and Ron, really quick. So as yeah. of right now, yeah, we, so we are starting very uh, conservatively and, and slow and steady. So you're actually not able to add your own LP to SparkSwap at the moment. Uh, it has to be LP that we as a team uh, initiate for you. Uh, but the plan moving forward is, you know, eventually we'll open that up where anybody or any project can provide their own LP, you know, just like on PulseX uh, or, or PancakeSwap or Uniswap. Um, and, you know, we're doing, uh, that's all the crazy part. Uh, based on the volume, we're doing, we're number two to number three uh, decks on Pulse in terms of volume with only seven LP pairs. Uh, uh, most of the other DEXs have hundreds of LPs. So that's another really incredible metric of how many users we actually have. Uh, to be able to produce that, you know, with only a few pairs uh, is pretty remarkable. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, uh, thank you for the reminder, JB. Uh, and you guys are also building on L1X. We had, uh, we had, you know, the team, uh, like few, few days ago for an AMA. Uh, great team, uh, great products over there and what they are building. So, uh, really good to see that, uh, you know, uh, that you guys are working together, uh, over there. I'm really excited to see what this kind of like their apps and, uh, yeah, well, what will bring it to the space and for investors, of course. Uh, JB, I think you have a so, question. Yeah, I just wanted to read um, a couple of questions that we have on our Telegram chat here. This is from sure. Adam, who's not able to actually speak right now. Um, and this kind of goes back to the, uh, the Richard, when you guys were talking about Richard Hart. Um, has the team currently thought about any precautions they could take and follow in case Pulse Chain gets into serious trouble in the future? Whether it is from a PR standpoint, reviving confidence in investors, or perhaps looking elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I think that the highest risk of that um, was much earlier on. Now that we're about five months into Pulse Chain, you know, even if Richard Hart died tomorrow, uh, there are already major, major steps that have been taken to decentralize the chain itself. So uh, again, as an example, uh, all the, the Pulse X and even the native Ethereum to Pulse Bridge, uh, all of the front end and code is actually now uh, hosted through IPFS. And you're actually even able to run your own uh, code, your own front end to interact with it uh, independently. And so again, these are really major steps uh, in the short term, it might hurt adoption a little bit because people, you know, not don't necessarily know how to run their own uh, front end code. Um, but in the long term, it really makes Pulse Chain bulletproof. Where you know, even if the SEC came down really hard uh, and uh, Richard lost, you know, his battle, which I think is highly uh, unlikely. Uh, but even if that did happen, the chain would still be able to run. Uh, on its own. And for us, you know, uh, our all of our entities are non-US based. 
uh, you know, uh, we feel like, you know, we're builders uh, on the chain. We're not endorsing uh, the chain, so to speak. Uh, so that also helps us, you know, have some separation there. Um, but ultimately, you know, any any chain can fail. You know, we saw it with Binance, uh, you know, when CZ was, uh, you know, indicted. Uh, obviously, we saw some short-term, you know, uh, price action, negative price action. But uh, BNB chain is not going anywhere. And so, again, I think that people get worried and get scared. But uh, over the long run, as long as people are building on Pulse and uh, there is a community on Pulse, uh, the, the regulatory aspect uh, becomes less and less of a potential problem. That's a great perspective to hear because I think, you know, there are a lot of people that may not be really aware of what's going on with Pulse Chain and Richard Hart because, you know, they're focused on other things right now, maybe just kind of waiting to get into any Pulse projects right now. But hearing that um, makes total sense. And I think it helps to give, you know, just current investor confidence and also potential new investor uh, confidence. Um, So thanks for that answer. Yeah, JB, absolutely. That was a great question. And, uh, you know, also to add just one more follow up. The other, the other potential bottleneck is the bridge. I mean, you know, when there was only one bridge in and out of Pulse, if that bridge goes down, that's very scary because now we're all playing with, you know, imaginary money. <laughs> so the idea of having multiple bridges uh, is also future proofing, you know, uh, the, the safety as well. So we're happy to, to be another bridge. There are some other uh, bridging options as well. Uh, obviously, they're a lot more expensive and take a long time. Uh, so we still have the leg up on them. Um, but uh, the idea is that the more and more options we have, uh, the less and less risk there is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and there was another question, but I think... Uh... I think um, we'll we'll keep going. Um, I'll pass it back to you, Arian. Yeah, thank you. Um, there is a question within the comments over here from uh, uh, Israel. So, is liquidity provided only in Spark or Impulse also? Uh, it's um, under the infinite money generator that I, I posted earlier. So, about creating the LP over there. Yeah, so again, if you're going to, the, the reward token or or reward assets that you get from Sparkler is only Spark PLS. And what happens is, just to give a, a breakdown, um, you know, say that we do $1,000 a day in, in protocol fees, 500 of that goes to buy Pulse, 500 of that goes to buy Spark, the LP is created, and then that LP token is what is rewarded to you based on your share of ownership. So, you know, uh, if you own, you know, based on your your shares, if you own 50% of the Sparkler pool, uh, based on what you have staked, um, then you get, you know, half of the rewards. So um, that's how it's broken down. Um, But yeah, everything is calculated and distributed in Spark PLS LP, Um, but you can earn Spark from any of our farms uh, and any LP that you want to have exposure to. So hopefully, did that answer? Uh, Aaron, I'm not sure if I got to the root of that question, but yeah. Uh, I think so, but yeah, please let us know uh, if that uh, covered your question. Again, if not, and uh, if the space uh, will be over, please make sure everyone you join their Telegram again here. We have all the links that have been posted, the first pin message within the nest. And make sure you give SparkSwap a follow here on Twitter. So make sure you click on that nice profile pic over there and on the follow button. Um, I have another question here. So it's in, uh, where is it? In regards of the Sparkler boundary. So uh, the question is, do I have to be staked in order to use the bounty program or is it, or is it free for everyone? Yeah, so another awesome question. Um, We do have a bounty on Sparkler where uh, you're able to initiate the uh, reward distribution um, and pay the gas uh, fee to do that uh, and then be rewarded in some of the fees. So, you know, what happens is uh, if somebody has a stake that has ended, 
but they have not ended their stake manually. Uh, obviously, because we're non-custodial, you know, we cannot do that for them. So the contract has to be called. Um, and so that bounty program uh, is in place to ensure people are not able to just uh, have a pending uh, ending stake and continue to earn rewards. So uh, nine times out of 10, that bounty is hit, you know, within seconds uh, of it being available. Uh, and yeah, uh, you don't have to be staked. Um, anybody can call that uh, contract function uh, and earn some of those pending rewards. And if you as a, a, a user uh, have let your stake uh, you know, go on, uh, we don't ever take what you're owed uh, you know, based on the duration of your stake. We only uh, take whatever a portion of whatever uh, is over your intended amount. Awesome, awesome. I think that uh, covers the question over there. And is it is it a cooldown period though? Let's say within once the stake will be over, until they can execute the transaction from from someone that can go and execute. Is is there a cooldown period within these two actions? Yeah. So you're you're never able to trigger it um, unless the stake has actually ended and. Again, it never it never affects your uh, pending rewards. It's only the overage. So if that bounty is called and you have a stake and sparkler, um, your rewards are still there for you. It still doesn't claim uh, automatically for you. Uh, it just allows the you know you not to earn more than what you're supposed to earn. So and again, the reason that that we do that is to maintain uh, a full decentralization um so we never have custody of the funds or you know the contract itself um and and that helps to again keep it very uh uh, uh above board <laughs> absolutely absolutely and um aj kind of like the last question uh, that was posed here last minute about from andy uh, if you can touch a bit again, uh, because we'll, by by having um, the swab, by having the uh, the yield farm, etc., um, kind of like what is your partnership approach, and yeah, what what is your partner approach, and uh, what projects are you looking in terms of partnering and working uh, to working together down the road? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a great question. I also uh, segues into one more topic that we didn't really cover that I want to end on, um, and that is arbitrage bots. So let me start with that, and then I'll answer the question uh, a little more precise, precisely. Um, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, another thing that makes SparkSwap really unique is that we run our own arbitrage bots, and typically, uh, you know, in in other uh, on other uh, DEXs or other chains, uh, arbitrage bots are very predatory. Where, you know, uh, again, just an example, uh, there's a sandwich bot uh, called Jared the Subway bot on, on uh, Ethereum. Um, and, you know, that bot can make up to a million dollars a day uh, just from arbitrage or front running um, buys and sells on a particular asset if somebody has their slippage set. Uh, incorrectly. And so with us, we, rather than a bot, you know, having access to, you know, front run all of our users or, you know, arbitrage on its own, we are able to have an advantage uh, uh, on the fees of running our own arbitrage. And rather than that uh, money leaving the ecosystem, again, imagine a million dollars a day uh, on ETH being extracted from uh, those projects, uh, well, with us, that stays within our ecosystem. So the arbitrage bots are actually uh, another version of revenue for the protocol, and uh, those help, you know, not only they feed Sparkler, uh, but they also help fund any potential development uh, without us having to ever sell uh, the Spark token. So it's very, very healthy, uh, and it keeps all of the economic power uh, within our protocol. And so with that, when we go look for partners uh, that we will eventually list uh, on uh, SparkSwap, we, we need to have partners that have volume. So 
uh, one of the major determining factors is a token that has uh, a lot more volume um, uh, than those that don't. Um, and we look into other many other factors of whether the team is trusted, you know, how long they've been around, uh, if they have a track record. So we really try to do a lot more due diligence uh, on listing tokens, uh, especially in the beginning, um, until we're able to open it up to where anybody can list uh, a token. But yeah, if uh, if you have you know more than say twenty five thousand dollars a day in volume, uh, and you're a a trusted project uh, on Pulse, please reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. Uh, and we also have bridge partners as well, where if you're a, you know, a, a DeFi protocol or NFT platform um, and you need help getting funds uh, onto Pulse, uh, we can also do a bridge partnership where you put a link uh, to the bridge on your website and then we help you with promo uh, as well. So we have a lot of ways that we can help uh, in, in terms of partnerships, uh, but we also are very careful and try to do as much due diligence uh, as we can to protect our community from any uh, potential, uh, you know, rugs or uh, negative uh, uh, projects. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, um, partnerships are really crucial. And, uh, like, you know, with Dex Finance over there, you guys started working together. And uh, look where you are right now. Uh, you're utilizing Perfect. their tools. You're working together. And uh, you just keep building. Again, the, the, the whole space, we're, we're so early uh, when it comes to crypto. We are just getting started. And, uh, yeah, by working together and, uh, you know, utilizing each other's tools, and services uh, it's the only way in order to uh, create something new survive and uh, yeah make it happen make it happen bring that adoption uh, to the space and you know for the, the the kind of like the daily volume that you have as um, as a barrier let's let, let's sit that way uh, i think it's reasonable 25k it's something that uh, you know most of the projects would uh, would have in order to you know have a partnership uh, add add value to each other uh, if you're about to work together so i think it's um, it's pretty reasonable and you know low uh, m m most of the project the, the series project who are building something sh my kind of like you know they are ranging uh, within within that uh, sure. that volume yeah. uh, good stuff man good stuff and yeah when it comes to the arbitrage bots uh, these can be <laughs> really printing machine and yeah, bring some good uh, good revenue back to the project. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And you know, to your point as well about builders, you know, we also have some incredible uh, partners on Pulse uh, already that we've started working with, um, even outside of, you know, uh, a farm or, you know, a bridge partner. Uh, and one of those that comes to mind is Tetra. And uh, we're working with Tetra. Right now, uh, and they're one of the first protocols uh, on Pulse that will offer limit orders uh, and other uh, aggregators that will actually help route volume through our DEX. So, um, you know, again, not only with DEX Finance, you know, being part of our team now and helping us scale development, but we're... we're hey, AJ... AJ, sir, to you. I think you're n n not sure if it's uh, your signal or something, but we kind of like hear you in oh, and right. out. You're breaking over there. Can you hear me? Let's see. AJ, are you with us? Okay, probably. He's uh, connecting, shows us connecting on my site. Let's give it a second. In the meantime, everyone, make sure you join their Telegram. It's pinned over there. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, go ahead, JB. I was just going to say, you know, if he was going to get disconnected, this is probably the best time because he went over so much, uh, so thoroughly. It was a good, uh, it was a good run for the AMA. I, I, oh, here he is. Okay. There we go. There, there, there you go. You. You sound good Our now. Yeah. I swear, never fails. Yeah, when we hit an hour, <laughs> you know, X wants to do funny things. So uh, anyway, yeah, we can wrap it up. I just wanted to clarify what I was saying before I left. Uh, that uh, we're working with some awesome, uh, well-respected other protocols as well uh, within Pulse. One of them is Tetra, um, and Tetra allows for limit orders and uh, smart contract automation. Um, as well as aggregating. Um, so we're hoping, again, nothing official with them yet, um, but we are working behind the scenes to help uh, uh, actually aggregate and route more volume through uh, a SparkSwap. Uh, and again, that's just more volume, more fees, and better pricing uh, on, on pairs that we have more liquidity on. You know, For the user, it's even less price impact. So yeah, uh, so we're yeah we're doing amazing things, and uh, we're excited to keep building, uh, uh, you know, on Pulse and beyond. Amazing, 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 good stuff, good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm just checking. Uh, I think we went through all the questions that we had within the comment section here within our Telegram and DMs. Um, Anything else that we missed, uh, AJ? I, I think from my side, I, I did cover everything, uh, all, all what I had to ask from my side, but uh, anything else that we missed? Yeah, no, I think we did a great comprehensive uh, overview of Spark and uh, all the, the updates that we have. I don't know if LA is still here. She's my, my head of marketing uh, at both Spark and EMP. Uh, LA, is there anything else that we should cover before we head out? LA is down as a, uh, as a listener, but yeah, if she wants to come up, uh, feel free to request to speak. All right, yeah, she'll text me, I guess. So yeah, I think we covered it all. Um, yeah, I mean, again, it's been an absolute pleasure. You know, it's always awesome coming in the dojo. We had a great turnout today of over 100. Um, and yeah, I mean, moving forward, you know, we're, we're as transparent and uh, open as we can possibly be. So if anybody has questions or wants to know more about the protocol, wants to know more how, how to get involved. Uh, we do our own AMAs on YouTube uh, and our Telegram on Mondays and Thursdays at 6.45 p.m. Eastern. So we have one tonight, um, and we will have one on Thursday again every week. Um, and that's a great opportunity uh, to get access you know, directly to us uh, and the team uh, to go over anything that you might want to know. Uh, and we also give you know updates of development and where we where where we're uh, where we're at on the roadmap. So yeah, would love to have you over there again. Always a pleasure. Uh, much love to all of you guys. Absolutely, man. Yeah, great AMA. Uh, it's always here with you. Uh, I really enjoy. You know, I think it's more like a nice uh, chill chat with you. Uh, uh, you know. Talking, talking and going through the project. So always love uh, having you back uh, in here. Uh, AJ, if you have a moment, I have Mikasa. He's uh, one one of my all of our community members and he has a question. If you can take the last one. Absolutely, brother. Yes. And yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> Arian, I always love talking to you, brother. It's like we're, uh, we're old friends catching up. So yeah. Thanks, Arian. Um, hey, man. Uh, it's it's impressive. Um, you've done quite a really superb um, explanation about the um, Spark, Spark Swap project. Just one thing caught my attention. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of privacy. And uh, one thing that requires privacy uh, means part of testing your network. And I am seeing something about the bounty program. I, I wanted to ask him if you haven't really you know, spoken much about it. Is it still on? And um, what's the procedures and, uh, and the requirements for to participate in this? if it is still on. 
Yeah, my class, absolutely, brother. So, yes, we always have an ongoing bounty program. Um, if there is anything that, you know, some independent devs might see or find or, you know, think is an issue, uh, please reach out to us on Discord. Um, we have a, a ticket system uh, on Discord. But, you know, our, our developers are the best of the business. Uh, not only the devs themselves, uh, we do multiple peer reviews, um, but most of the code if not all of the code, uh, has been audited um, by uh, either, you know, uh, uh, like I said earlier, Halborn, um, you know, uh, again, the many, many uh, different audits. Um, and so, as well as our track record, we, again, both EMP and Spark uh, have never, ever had an exploit. We've had 100% uptime. You know, uh, the bridge can uh, go down from time to time, um, but uh, funds are always SAFU, and the only reason the bridge goes down is because of Pulse uh, nodes or BSC uh, nodes and RPCs, so nothing based on our code. So yeah, um, but yeah, brother, if you uh, have any, you know, uh, white hat, uh, you know, experience, please reach out to our Discord. Uh, I'll definitely dig in more, but um, I, I must commend you. It's really, really robust, super efficient and robust as well. Um, that was the only uh, itch I had, and thanks for really addressing that, taking your time to address that. That'll be all my questions. I wish you guys the best, and I really hope that Spark Swap stays foolish. Mode. Thanks, Arian. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you, Mikasa. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us for the Spark Swap AMA. Uh, back to you, uh, AJ. Any closing words? Any call to action? Anything else that you want to add, my man? I think that's it, brother. Another awesome AMA. Again, it was a pleasure at the dojo. Uh, we dropped some exclusive alpha uh, just for you guys. And yeah, keep, stay in touch. Uh, I'd love to do another follow up AMA uh, in a few more weeks as we move on. Uh, we have even another uh, incredible uh, product that we're working on. Uh, again, we, we haven't dropped uh, any alpha ever on this, not even to our own community. Uh, but after Vaults, we have another really special project that is a, a, another Pulse uh, first. So again, man, we, we're always building, we're always working, and uh, the sky is the limit, man. So we're excited to Continue to grind uh, into the next bull run. Looking forward, AJ. Looking, uh, yeah, absolutely looking forward. So uh, keep us posted, and uh, definitely we will we will have you back here for another uh, AMA for the next alpha. Uh, which doesn't sound to be that far away from <laughs> from now. But uh, yeah, man, thank you so much once again. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, make sure you join their Telegram. Give them a follow here on Twitter. Uh, let, let's show our support. So click on that uh, icon over there and click the follow button. And uh, as always, please do, do, you, do your own research, uh, check their community, check their platform, uh, check the team, get a feeling, as we keep saying, uh, of, of the team, uh, how they are doing, how they are, you know, kind of like engaging with the community, etc. And you, if you feel like uh, that's something you want to be part of, uh, go for it. If you have questions, again, go for it. Don't be shy. It's your money. It's your investment, investment in the end of the day. So don't be shy about it. Um, yeah. Have a great rest of the day. Have a great week ahead. Uh, let's mash it. Cheers. Cheers.